good morning everyone and uh, welcome to our first Love Caffili Family Church Sunday Live. It's uh, great to be together. You know, we may not be together physically right now, but we are definitely together in heart and purpose. And you know, Jesus is still Lord. Um, he is on his throne. His kingdom is still advancing. Jesus is still King. Uh, it's so good to be together uh, this morning. And wherever you are, I just want to let you know that um, Kate and I are praying for you. And uh, we're believing that even though this circumstance and this situation is, is challenging and it's difficult for many of us in different ways, uh, we're praying for you that you would continue to stay encouraged in God, knowing that he is for you and that he is with you uh, and that because of him, we are more than conquerors. Um, we've uh, got a few different things to encourage you with today. And, uh, and that's my prayer for you, uh, is that, you know, as fancy as all this is, is that you'd be encouraged in your faith. Um, and so today we've got a few different things going on. Uh, Caleb is actually going to be leading us in a song this morning uh, with uh, possibly a few other special guests. Uh, as well as that, Rob will be encouraging us to continue to honour God in our finances. Because, you know, no matter what your circumstance kingdom principles always remain the same and uh, Rob will be sharing a little bit on that later and after this video we've got two uh, very special smaller videos for our children which the amazing Stuart and Anne have put together uh, so watch out for them after this live video we'll post them on the group after this live video but before all of that uh, I'm just going to share briefly with you uh, from the Word of God so if you have your Bibles um, we're going to turn to Psalm 91 and we're going to read from verse 1. It says this, Whoever dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. Surely He will save you from the foulest snare and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with his feathers and under his wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness will be your shield and rampart. You will not fear the terror of night, nor the arrow that flies by day, nor the pestilence that stalks in the darkness, nor the plague that destroys at midday. A thousand may fall at your side, ten thousand at your right hand side but it will not come near you. You will only observe with your eyes and see the punishment of the wicked. If you say the Lord is my refuge and you make the most high your dwelling, no harm will overtake you. No disaster will come near your tent for he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. They will lift you up in their hands so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. You will tread on the lion and the cobra. You will trample the great lion and the serpent. Because he loves me, says the Lord, I will rescue him. I will protect him, for he acknowledges my name. He will call on me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. Praise God. It's good words. Amen. We're going to turn now to Philippians chapter 4. And we're going to be reading from verse 4. When you get there, say yes, Jesman. Excellent. Philippians chapter 4, reading from verse 4. And this is a scripture that we, uh, we shared at the prayer meeting on Tuesday night. And it keeps coming back to us. Uh, it says this. Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again, rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, Whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Whatever you have learned or received or heard from me or seen in me, 
put into practice and the God of peace will be with you. Praise God. I just want to remind you guys today that as God's people, we do not need to live in fear. You know, if we are a people of faith, then we cannot walk in fear because faith and fear cannot coexist. It's okay to be concerned, but God doesn't want us to panic. It's okay to take precautions, but God does not want us to be paralyzed by fear. And in Psalm 56 verses three to four, David, when confronted with danger and fear, he said this, when I am afraid, I will put my trust in you. In God, I have put my trust. I shall not be afraid. You know, it's said that in the Bible, the phrase, do not fear, is written 365 times. That means that there's one of those verses for every single day of the year. And uh, I'm reminded of the scripture of where Jesus talks about how his heavenly father takes care of the birds in the air and how much more will he take care of us, his children. So when fear comes knocking, guys, answer the door with faith. And I want to encourage you, just be strong, be courageous, be positive, be thankful, and let's be the body of Christ. Let's look out for one another. You know, let's function together. If the Holy Spirit puts somebody on your heart, give them a text, give them a ring, because that's who we are. We are a people that work together. That's the body functioning as it should do. So there's a few scriptures there for you, a few encouragements. Um, I pray that you have a good day. Uh, we're going to have Caleb now, who's going to sing one of our favourite songs. Uh, and then Rob is going to take up our tithes and offerings. Uh, but just know that, you know, stay connected. It's important to stay connected with one another. More than that, it's, it's important to stay connected to God. Use this time to, to fill yourself with him, to focus upon him. And guys, hold on to the things that you've been taught. Have a great day. See you guys. Oh, oh, oh.
morning church it's time for tithes and offerings i trust that you've had a good week under the circumstances now it would be very easy under the isolation order to start looking inward and just start looking after ourselves and we've seen some of that in the world but we've also seen a lot of remarkable generosity and that is still very much god's heart you see his economy still works in a time of crisis his stock market hasn't crashed he's not nervous and the shelves of his supply of course will never run out But in the Bible, you find time and time again that in a time of crisis, he will reassure his people of his promises. And the other week we read Zechariah 9.12, where it said, Return to the stronghold, you prisoners of hope. Even today I declare that I will restore double to you. But as always, our response is key. And I found two remarkable stories in the Bible this week about response. And the first one is in Genesis 26. There is a famine in the land, and at that time, famine was a mass killer. It was a big threat. Now, the story is about Isaac, Abraham's son. And Abraham had passed away by this time. And Isaac travels to a place called Gerah. And in the story, God reconfirms, he reassures Isaac of all the promises he made to Abraham applied to him. And so Isaac's response is quite remarkable. You see, there's a famine going on, but Isaac takes his stash of seed, and rather than hoarding it, He plants it. Seed doesn't grow at a time of famine, but his did, miraculously yielding a harvest a hundredfold. Do you know, he was confident of sowing into his future because God had made him a promise. Now, at a time of crisis, we must not close our hands in self-protection, but we have to continue to sow generously because God has made so many promises to us about our future. Now, there's lots more in that story, but that is really for another time. Now, the second story I just wanted to quickly read is in Acts 11, and uh, you'll find it at verse 27. I'm going to read from the New Living Translation. So if you're going to read along, it's Acts 11, verse 27. Here we go. During this time, some prophets traveled from Jerusalem to Antioch. One of them was named Agabus. Love that name. And Agabus stood up in one of the meetings and predicted by the spirit that a great famine was coming upon the entire Roman world. This was fulfilled during the reign of Claudius. So the believers in Antioch decided to send relief to the brothers and sisters in Judea, everyone giving as much as they could. This they did, entrusting their gifts to Barnabas and Saul to take to the elders of the church in Jerusalem. So again, there's a famine, serious life-threatening crisis but look at their first response they open their hearts to give they open their hands and to give and it's such a great response wonderful response but i have another question why did they send it to judea straight away should they not wait to see where the greatest need was as the famine was going to cover the whole the whole roman empire big area but there's another important principle here for us not to forget Their first response was to honour those who first proclaimed the gospel that they were now benefiting from. Giving honour is really important and it attracts God's attention and intervention. It it was quite remarkable this week. We, uh, on Thursday evening, we we went outside and we joined our village clapping for the NHS to give them honour and respect and thanks for all the work that they're doing. It it was quite a surreal moment. People were whistling, people were shouting, there was lots of clapping, and there were fireworks going off. It was a really good moment. It was a feel-good moment, but I also believe it brought God's supernatural element to the situation in the UK because we honoured somebody, something that should be honoured. Now, when it comes to our giving today, the Bible says, honour the Lord with the first fruits of your increase, Proverbs 3. That's our tithe, and honouring God first and foremost at this time is really important. Let's also remain generous with our giving, being confident and assured of his promises for our future, that we don't have to close our hand to protect our interests, because he has us covered and will bless our sowing as he did Isaac's. On a practical point, as we are not physically meeting, a lot of us, I know, already give by bank transfer, uh, but if you don't already and would, and would like to, the details, I believe, are below me here. And then also, if you could let Annie know what is tithe and what is offering, she can then correctly allocate it in the accounts. OK, so just to conclude, I think it's good to pray. So let's pray. Father, we want to thank you. We want to thank you that in all the current uncertainty, you remain the same 
and your word endures forever. We thank you that you and all of your power stand behind all the promises that you have made. We want to honour you first and foremost in the bringing of our tithes and we ask that you would still all of our fears about money and cause our hearts to stay generous and our hands open to give and receive. I pray for every person in our fellowship, Lord Jesus, and I pray that every person and family struggling, that as we honour you and that, that you would supernaturally intervene to meet every need. Thank you, Jesus. You're so good. Okay, have a great day, everyone. Stay safe, stay in touch with one another and keep washing those hands.